Sulfur crested cockatoos around Australia are learning how to get into your rubbish bins. And I think it's about time I came clean. I taught them how to do it. With this. Say hello to the Bin Chicken Training Aid, your tool for turning even the dumbest flying bolt cutter into a trash can terror. Its patent pending flap faithfully recreates the experience of raiding a real life rubbish bin, so your local cockies will be adapt in no time. Available for a limited time only with four easy payments of $99.69. Act now, now, the bolt. Okay, okay, so I didn't teach all the cockatoos how to get into rubbish bins because, well, they figured it out themselves. Parrots are among the smartest birds in the world and sulfur crested cockatoos are notoriously tenacious, able to achieve their goals through cleverness and carnage. And thanks to a multi-year study by Australian and German ecologists with the assistance of the public, they've been documented to learn these skills through social interaction, observing and then passing on the newly learnt skills to others. And this is different to the OG bin chickens or Australian white ibis, who just by chance had a beak shape perfectly suited to rummaging through bins, cockatoos are using their intelligence problem solving and social interaction to figure out this new skill. And well, personally, I'm not surprised to hear this. I've been putting this intelligence to the test with a series of puzzles for some time now with the help of this boy, Popeye, a wild sulfur crested cockatoo. And yes, for everyone wondering, he is absolutely still around and visits us regularly. But I can assure you that Popeye isn't completely dependent on our handouts. I only give him small amounts of seed and apple now and then, and we've been away for weeks at a time sometimes, with him coping just fine. With the paper's findings, which is well worth a read, I wanted to conduct my own mini experiments and observations with the following goals. Number one, can the learnt behaviour be replicated on a smaller scale? And if so, how long does it take the birds to figure it out? Number two, can I document evidence of other birds observing and learning from the skills of another? And number three, what approaches could be taken to prevent the birds getting into the puzzle once they know that there's a chance of a reward? And to test, I designed this, the bin chicken puzzle. Here's how it works. The puzzle resembles a miniature Australian rubbish bin with a red top, which has a raised internal shelf to hold a small amount of sunflower seeds as a reward. There's a single small tab which must be delicately manipulated to open the lid past a certain point where it will swing open due to gravity. In addition, I've designed in large holes which can be used to lock the lid closed using a variety of means. And I'll be testing to see what, if any, method works to keep them out. As always, our first test subject is Popeye. He's a lot more comfortable with us these days, but still incredibly cautious. And that caution is seen here as he approaches the brand new puzzle. There's already a link between things I put on the balcony and the possibility of food, which is probably why he cares about it in the first place, but he can't see the reward through the red lid. So I would say his interactions with it are very investigative, but not determined. And he ended up leaving it unsolved. A few days later, he returned and I set the puzzle up the same way with a few seeds in front to perhaps hint at the puzzle containing more. Once again, he's curious, but not too invested. In the paper, the researchers were undecided whether cockatoos begun the behavior of opening bins because they found an open bin with food in it by chance or investigated one just for fun. To see if the open bin theory had merit, I tried presenting it to him in this way and Popeye beelined for the seeds. I've already established in previous experiments that these birds have a very good grasp of object permanence, that is, an understanding that objects continue to exist even when they cannot be seen. And now by establishing that this closed puzzle does indeed contain a tasty reward, his interactions after I close it are decidedly more invested.
And well, there you have it. That was Popeye in real time figuring out how to open the lid to gain access to the reward inside. It's not as involved as opening a full-blown bin lid, but still required a bit of finesse and a little bit of extra assistance with his foot. He polished off the seeds, then continued to investigate for a short time further, before then deciding to close the lid again and head off. With there now being a connection between the puzzle and Tasty Seeds, I decided to test him again on a particularly windy day, with dowels blocking the lid from opening. It's probably been a good six months since Popeye has seen one of the previous puzzles which used these dowels, but very clearly still recognises their purpose, removing two in very quick succession. Takes him a bit because he seems distracted by something, but he does eventually remove all the remaining dowels. But then he walks away from the puzzle instead of opening it. And this is why. We have a new visitor. This is Prince. While Popeye is our regular loner parrot, Prince has been appearing now and then recently on his own or in a flock, and we named him Prince for a reason. He thinks he runs the joint and deserves all the treats. He hasn't really earned it. Unlike Popeye, Prince is incredibly tame and not afraid of humans at all, which probably means he's fed by a range of people in the neighborhood and is clearly a dominant bird. But what about the puzzle? Well, initially, he doesn't care about it at all. Instead, he just kind of sits next to it as if to say, feed me, you monster. As Prince scoured the balcony though, Popeye did actually approach the puzzle again, cautiously, but he didn't attempt to open it. At the time, I figured he might have forgotten that seeds could be inside, remember the lid is opaque, but now I'm really wondering if he chose not to open it so Prince wouldn't see that it contained food and so outcompete him? I'm not sure. What do you think? Either way, Popeye did get bored and left, leaving Prince to chill, and then this happened. I'm not sure why he waited and showed zero interest in the puzzle till this point, perhaps again trying to keep it to himself, or maybe just being opportunistic and looking for free floating seeds, but his technique of flinging the lid open is different and faster than Popeye's more cautious foot assisted method, and he does it first try. I feel like he's done something like this before, but I promise you, this is the first time he's interacted with this puzzle design. What he clearly hasn't done before, however, is solve puzzles involving dowels. I reinserted two that hadn't been flung off the balcony, and it resulted in the biggest tantrum I've seen for some time. I've gotten pretty good at making puzzles parrot-proof, but damn is he trying, using that huge beak as a lever to try and pry the stuck lid open from every possible angle. Eventually, his flailing knocked out the final dowel purely by chance, and it takes him a bit of time to realise he'd actually solved it. But then I just had to go and make an enemy for life by closing the puzzle again in his face. Twice. Yeah, if looks could kill. While the Dow provided some challenge, I felt they fall out too easily on their own, and after leaving the puzzle alone for just a couple of minutes, I came back to this naughty boy who had literally torn one of them in half. So I instead opted for sticks. These sticks have been cut in such a way that they can only be removed in one direction and come from the trees that the birds roost in. I just found them on the ground, so they're safe for the cockatoos to handle. I'm really curious to see what techniques they use to remove them, so for this version of the puzzle I also designed in a new feature, Puzzle Cam. This is an Insta360 GO 2, an absolutely tiny action camera, and I've designed slots for clear acrylic panels in this puzzle to give us a first person view of what it truly is like to be a puzzle. Our first volunteer is Prince, and he spares no time in figuring it out. First a cheeky try at the lid, but it won't budge. Then he investigates the sticks blocking its path. Some people commented on previous videos of me testing these birds that things requiring pulling are naturally easy for cockatoos, and I do have to agree. It seems to be the motion they're most comfortable with, 
and he yeets that first stick without a care but the second won't pull out in that direction. It's pretty incredible just how much dexterity they have with that beak and tongue. It's like another foot. He spins the stick around trying to figure out just how to free it. He tries another cheeky grab at the lid, but nope. And then a lucky pull. Showing the ultimate laziness, he tries opening the lid from the rear, but failing that, he's in. And also, is it just me, or does the puzzle can feel a bit like that scene in Jurassic Park where the T-Rex rips the roof off the toilet block and eats the lawyer? Truly horrifying. As he enjoys his reward, I retrieve the sticks from downstairs and reset the puzzle to see how much quicker he could solve it, but something odd occurred. When solving puzzles with Popeye, he is usually incredibly twitchy and cautious, flying off at the slightest sign of a threat. But Prince is usually super dominant and tame, so, what happened here? Now, I don't think I spooked him, but instead perhaps the clear lid is acting like a mirror as it opens, flashing an image of themselves along with the sun and startling the bird. Something similar occurred later that day with Popeye visiting when I repeated the experiment, so after this test, I swapped back to the red opaque lid. Now, if you don't want your house to get destroyed, it's a pretty good rule not to feed the flock. Single cockatoos that come now and then I might give a treat to, but in large groups, they are incredibly naughty and destructive. Still, I've noticed that small numbers will congregate on our balcony on occasion, usually after a big storm or in the evening, almost like we've become a meeting point before they head off to roost. And one cold evening, I was presented with the perfect opportunity to test and observe just how cockatoos learn from each other. This group was comprised of eight individuals, with Popeye and Prince among them. But as usual, Popeye was pushed to the edge of the group and outcompeted at every opportunity. Poor darling. This scientific paper, Clump hypothesizes that larger dominant male cockatoos were more likely to open bins. That aligns with my observations here. Prince is clearly dominant in this situation. All the cockatoos know that humans mean food, but he knows the puzzle means food too. Moving in to solve the puzzle, while other members of the flock wait back and observe. I love this little interaction, how he shows a little bit of dominance to the clueless onlooker, as if to say, out of the way mate, I got this. While he went to work, the birds all kept distance, but watched intently, only moving in after he solved it, and the reward was accessible. Remember, in a span of only a few weeks and a handful of interactions, Prince went from treating the puzzle like it didn't exist, to acting like a frustrated child, to skillfully solving and opening it with a very defined twist and slide solving technique, one of which other cockatoos have since begun to try adopting, albeit less elegantly. But they are trying, they just need more practice, which definitely hints that they're learning from observing. But what if you don't want them getting into your bins? How do you stop one or more of these tenacious birds once they figure out that your trash might mean food? Well, I tried a few things. Sticks or dowels are no challenge for the birds. Once they have the technique down, they will twist and pull until they remove it. Sometimes it takes them a bit longer if they get the direction wrong first try, but overall, all the birds now make quick work of them to get inside. How about some string with a knot? Well, unless you're willing to tie a knot that you can't even undo, that's no use either, as it seems cockatoos are also quite skilled at undoing them. This was this bird's first attempt. Heck, I even tried bribing them with a promise of free seed for life if they just redeemed the coupon, but they threw my generous offer back 
in my face. His loss. I mean, that silly bird could have had seeds for life. But, mm, I guess he knows I'll just cave and do it regardless. <laughs> but don't despair, for there is one method of discouraging these birds that I've discovered, and it works so well. Yet, I haven't really seen anyone try it. This is the punishment parrot. Some time ago, I discovered purely by chance that the cockatoos hate plush toys. I mean, really, really hate them and are incredibly cautious of them. It does seem to matter what kind of plush toy it is, they find some less intimidating than others, but this adorable Australian-made plush of a crimson rosella absolutely freaks them out. On some occasions, I've had to disperse a large number of birds. For example, they've seen me giving Popeye a treat and then descended from the heavens and then push him out. So I introduced them to the punishment parrot and it works every single time. And you can see here with the parrot now, he won't even approach the puzzle and sits at the far edge of the balcony, just stunned. And eventually, he just leaves. So if you don't want your fly screens destroyed or your balcony chewed on, for a start, don't feed them, ever. <laughs> but if they have associated your balcony or bins with food, then I would recommend some kind of brightly colored plush toy and something reflective that moves, because after some research I found out that's already a popular method of discouraging birds. My warning here though is that they're so damn clever, they wouldn't leave the deterrent out all the time, as they might figure out that it's actually not a real threat, so use sparingly for maximum effect. If you have any other suggestions though, please do share them in the comments below, because cockatoos really shouldn't be rummaging through rubbish bins. If you enjoyed this video, maybe consider subscribing, and if you'd like to test out your own parrots with the Bin Chicken Education System, you can find links in the video description, as well as links to the various resources I've mentioned in this video. I also post more bird content on my second channel, so there's that. But either way, thanks for watching. Bye.